Hey gang, so for a while I've been thinking of making this video to just discuss a little bit of my experience in implementing some of the medical medium protocols. Quick backstory, firstly I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis around 2011. Yeah, 2011 I was pregnant and so for that pregnancy I took the thyroid medication and then I came off that medication with my endocrinologist because uh, my thyroid levels were fine. It was really just precautionary to be on that medication and you do what you're going to do when you're pregnant, right? You to take care of your baby. So I came off that medication. All my thyroid levels have been pretty decent since then on the lower end of normal, but always within range. Fast forward to June 2017 and I had a very sudden onset of double vision, like carnival mirror vision. Instantly, I couldn't see properly. So I tried to... Uh, um, dial triple O through the distorted picture and it felt like about a minute. It probably wasn't a minute. It, it lasted a, a little while and then it subsided completely. And so instead of calling an ambulance, I went straight to the GP and it felt like she thought I was a bit of a hypochondriac, which I am not. <laughs> and I was really trying to get her to understand that this was neurological. This was not my eyes. I just knew it wasn't my eyes. But she sent me to the optometrist. So I went to the optometrist and he said my eyes were perfect. Um, but these episodes persisted. A whole bunch of other symptoms started to appear. Numb and weak arms and legs. Sometimes I'd get restless legs and sometimes I'd wake up literally unable to move my arms. They were paralyzed. Uh, I'd get shortness of breath or like, like tightness in my chest, like it was difficult to breathe trouble swallowing i'd get i'd have panic attacks i'd wake up and be so distressed i knew that if i went back to sleep i would not wake up and i'm not an anxious person i'm not really at all an anxious person really bad brain fog i remember once staring at a sock on the floor for like a minute and, and i couldn't remember the word for it i'm like what is that thing called and i also remember driving home once when i picked the girls up from dance this is something i'd do four nights a week driving this road and i suddenly didn't know where i was i didn't know what road i was on for po possibly 10 seconds or so i was like where where are we <laughs> god clumsiness i drop things all the time and it also trip over really easily particularly my right foot felt heavy like numb weak and heavy like it didn't work as well as it used to and it didn't work as well as the left i'd stammer over my speech i couldn't find the words i'd have to like pause and try to remember the words for what i was trying to say horrendous fatigue two hours one or two hours after getting up in the morning i'd need another nap especially after a shower showers would just wipe me out and depersonalization or derealization disorder i would have to i remember i'd, I'd go like this to like feel like I was in my body like you know when you pinch yourself to see to like see if you're dreaming I'd be like is this my real life <laughs> am I in here am I living this possibly a whole bunch more things that I've forgotten about but, but also the least of my worries at that time but weight gain I gained about 15 kilos in well under a year probably under six months and I gained a total of I think about 21 kilos in the last what is it, six years? This year I've lost about 10. So yay. <laughs> and it is likely that I've forgotten some symptoms. Sometimes I'll remember a symptom, something will trigger my memory, and then I'll realize that I haven't experienced that symptom for months or years. So that's really cool. So over the course of the next few weeks after that first double vision episode, I was Googling all my symptoms, trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And the next time I had double vision, I went, it was the middle of the night, it was midnight, so I went straight to the hospital. I went to the emergency room and I said, I think I'm having a mini stroke. And they looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> they were really nice, but they looked at me like I was a bit crazy. But once they took me in, uh, I could hear the nurses at the nurse's station talking loudly about how annoying it is when people come in and there's clearly nothing wrong with them. Why don't they just, they know that we need the beds for people and why do they do that? And look, maybe they were not talking about me at all, but I'm pretty sure they were. <laughs> And honestly, that's the last place I wanted to be. I did not want to be in the hospital. I'd left my babies asleep. My kids were asleep at home with Matt and I 
I didn't want to go to the hospital at midnight. I didn't want to be there. So then a doctor came to see me and she clearly thought there was nothing wrong with me. And honestly, she seemed a little annoyed with me. This wasn't really a fun night. But then the neurologist came and he was really good. He was really nice. He asked me questions <laughs> and he did some an exam and some tests on sensation and he agreed that there was nothing wrong he said i don't that you seem perfectly fine but let's get an mri and i thought good let's do something that's great <laughs> but the mri was perfectly normal which is great and then i i went to see another neurologist a, a private practice neurologist because i needed to figure out what was going on with me and he agreed he looked at the mri and he said this is your brain looks perfect well, that's fabulous kind of <laughs> Um, and I suggested to him, I'd heard that MS can, sometimes it doesn't show up in your brain. Sometimes it shows up just in your spine. And he said, that's not true, but let's get an MRI done of your spinal cord we, and try and figure out what's going on. So he was brilliant. The MRI of my spinal cord showed nothing. That was also perfectly normal and there was nothing to see there, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic and frustrating it's funny when you get to this point where you want to see something wrong with yourself because <laughs> you just feel so shit you want a reason for it anyway there's nothing wrong which is great then i went back to the gp a different gp this time and got just a full blood test i said like can you do my blood see if there's any deficiencies anything showing up that would indicate what's going on here and so he was good. He did a, a full blood test for me. All the bloods were good, no deficiencies, and nothing came up in my blood tests. So my blood looked perfect. Everything looked perfect, which is awesome and crap because I wasn't perfect. I felt like I was dying. I was convinced I wasn't going to see 40 and I was 34 at the time and I was sure I was going to die before I was 40 and then I just got in this countdown mode of just make sure you can get your kids to an age where they'll be okay because they were eight and four I think like just get a little longer like so that they'll remember you they'll have good memories and they'll be be homeschool they're with me all the time but they'll be solid like they'll be their own people and they won't need me so much just push this out this finish line just push it out a little further Anyway, I turned 40 this year and I feel better than I have in many, many years. So that brings me to my experience with the medical medium protocols. I just want to share my experience. So yeah, I'll, I'll get onto a bit of um, what has worked for me over the last six or so years. Because when you, you, ha you have all these tests done and then there's nothing wrong, but you still feel the symptoms and they they were getting worse i wasn't getting better at all but you just sort of sent on your way off <laughs> off you go then like that's fine and some of these doctors were really good but we put doctors on this pedestal and they're still only human and they couldn't find the answers so it wasn't really fair to expect anything more of them they tried they'd exhausted their options and then they they had nothing else really to offer me and fair enough like eliminating some of these possibilities was helpful it's it's helpful psychologically so we got to figure out how to pave a way forward and so on my own i went out to do that and i came across the medical medium and i do want to say because i'm not a big taker of medication but if any of these doctors had said i found it i found what's wrong and here is your script i would have filled that script so fast i would have been at the chemist give me my drugs and help me <laughs> so yeah around um july late july august 2017 i came across medical medium and in one of his books there was a case study of a 34 year old woman who had matching symptoms to me. So many of our symptoms were identical and it was awesome because I thought this is not in my head. I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't in my head, but to know that you're not alone is a really powerful thing. His protocols on the surface seem to be largely around eliminating what he calls no foods or I've seen lists that say they call them no foods, and I was already vegan. So the four vegan no foods are gluten, soy, canola, and corn. I eliminated gluten immediately and very quickly saw improvement across all symptoms. They didn't disappear, but it, they were much more, um, much less severe. So my double vision 
improved a lot like and periodically over time it kept improving bit by bit it was less distorted and my um numbness i it it was just less everything was less severe and sort of tapering off just from eliminating gluten eliminating gluten didn't fix everything though the, the symptoms didn't completely disappear so in april 2019 I reluctantly started the celery juicing because I fucking hate celery. I hate it. But I thought, fine, I'll, I'm going to do it. You do what you got to do, right? So I started celery juicing every morning, half a litre, I think it's 16 ounces, it's about half a litre of straight celery juice on an empty stomach every morning. And I have done that since April 2019, which I think is 1,400 and I looked it up today, 1,472 days, something like that, in a row with celery juice. I think I'm going to quit it soon, but anyway, that can be another video. Uh, and the celery juice, I had, I remember I had this like little tiny lump behind my ear that I sometimes would just feel. And on day 11 of having celery juice, that was gone and it had been there for a long time and it had just disappeared, which fascinated me. The symptoms started to really disappear. Most of the symptoms that I listed in the beginning of this video are completely gone. They've got, been gone for at least two years, I reckon. I haven't had any of those symptoms. The only symptoms that remain are the excess weight, which I'm chipping away at. Woo! And still sometimes I get shortness of breath. And it's really only an issue when I'm driving. I get anxious, especially if my kids are with me. And it's hard to figure out if that's psychological now or if it's really a physical thing. I know it's still a physical thing because I feel it sometimes at other times when I'm not driving, when we're all just sitting on the couch, I'll feel this sort of slight, like I have to yawn to try and feel like I'm breathing every so often. But other than that, all of those symptoms have completely disappeared with these protocols. Over the years, I have dabbled in the supplement stuff, particularly the zinc, and I take B12 anyway, and I have taken a few of the other supplements that he, I mean, I did go hardcore at one point, but I don't feel like the supplements were the things that caused my healing. It's the consistent stuff has been eliminating the no foods and the celery juice. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to someone. <laughs> and if you are suffering with something, if you're suffering with medical symptoms, I absolutely encourage you to go to a medical doctor and get some medical tests done for sure. Like don't just listen to randoms on the internet giving you advice on what's worked. Like try things, experiment with yourself, but absolutely use medicine. It's a good thing. <laughs> use, utilize people's knowledge and find what works and leave what doesn't. And I wish you all great, vibrant health and lots of love and joy in your lives. And I wish you a spectacular day. Thanks for watching.